Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So today I'm going to be talking about the seven tenets of concept-based mathematics and if you're interested in this topic then please keep on watching. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the seven tenets of concept-based mathematics. So I'm just going to move myself out of the way so that you can actually see what I'm going to be talking about. So let's start off with the first one. So number one, Mathematics is a language of conceptual relationships and therefore content driven. And I want to just explain what that means. So in all discipline areas, we have both the content and the processes. So what we know and what we do. And I think traditionally mathematics has been approached from only the processes. So while there are processes and we have to do mathematics, there are actually beautiful concepts in the actual content of mathematics. So just to be reminded that mathematics is a content driven discipline. So let's have a look at the next tenant, which is number two. So number two is about really trying to adopt uh, an inquiry-based learning approach and focus on those guiding questions that are derived from those generalizations, which are statements of conceptual understanding. And those questions actually lead students to arrive at those conceptual understandings themselves. So really trying to foster that uh, curiosity, motivation, and help students to explore the mathematics instead of just telling them what the mathematics is. Mm -hmm. So let's go to number three. So number three, I'm going to talk about the inductive teaching approach. Now, a lot of mathematicians, I think, agree that mathematics is actually a deductive science, but we want to help our students explore the mathematics as though it's they're discovering it with some carefully guided scaffolding and prompts. And so the inductive teaching approach, the inductive learning approach is when students look at specific examples and then they make generalizations so that they can apply and transfer their understanding to different situations. So number three, inductive teaching approach. What is the fourth tenant? So the fourth tenant really is based on knowing what your goals are, what the goals of learning, and they are generalizations, and not sharing them. So we don't share generalizations or statements of conceptual understanding with our students because we want them to arrive at those deep conceptual understandings. So not to share uh, those generalizations with your students in your units. Okay, let's have a look at number five. Now, this is, I think, often neglected in mathematics, content driven, right? Uh, what we mentioned in the tenant number one. And we really want to reflect the beauty and the creativity of mathematics so that there's not always just one answer, but there could be uh, possible different answers if we actually present more open-ended problems to students where they can actually explore and have more agency over their learning when they are directing the learning and directing the path. So really trying to focus on the beauty and the creativity of mathematics. Okay, let's go to number six. So number six, I talked earlier about the processes in mathematics. So of course, we do have processes in mathematics. We need to be able to do mathematics. And those processes exist to complement the content. So we actually have conceptual relationships and very important conceptual ideas in the content that we want to showcase and highlight. And that complements the processes in mathematics. Okay, so what's the last tenant? So the last one is that mathematics actually is interconnected and our teaching should reflect that. So trying to teach mathematics in these discrete topics of algebra separately, geometry separately, is actually quite artificial for mathematicians. Mathematicians actually see mathematics as an interconnected web of different ideas. And so in your units, try to reflect that interconnectedness. That means that, let me think, let me give you an example. So if we were having a look at the topic of fractions, decimals, and percentages, already we're showing the interconnectedness of those three types of number, but maybe trying to interconnect the topic of data handling so that the fractions, decimals, and percentages actually has a context for students to be able to understand deeper. So they're my seven tenants here. 
Uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, please put it in the section below. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time.